Good afternoon to you too, yes, Sherry. Yes, good afternoon to you too. And, and listen, hello to everybody all over the country who's watching us. It's a snow day for a lot of people, so everybody who's home today watching us, we thank you for watching. Oh my goodness, so much fun. When I tell you, I am in the state of just being grateful. I wanna say to our audience, thank you so much for coming out in all the snow. Because it is snowing like crazy in New York City. And I said to John, I said, I'm going to have to do all my jokes to you. Because <laughs> we didn't think that anybody was going to show up because it really is snowing very, very hard out here. And I have to say, y'all, I know that it was not easy getting here. So from the bottom of my heart, our hearts, thank you for coming. Thank you so much. And when I tell you, John, not only did our audience come, they showed up, they dressed showed up. up and dressed up. Dressed up, yeah. When I tell you, they showed up arms showing, legs showing, stilettos. <laughs> oh my goodness, they did not come to play in this snow. So when I tell y'all, it is snowing so much out here in New York that the city schools made it a remote learning day. So every, nobody's going to school today. So I, before I left for work, I woke up my son Jeffrey and I said, get up and sign on for school. I had the laptop right there on his desk. He gonna roll over and tell me there's no remote school for him. <laughs> he said, it's a full on snow day. We don't have remote. So I went back in and I had to check my email and, it, and the, the dog on email from the school said, it's a snow day, enjoy your snow day. I said, enjoy your what? <laughs> Because here's the thing, you know what's gonna happen? Because he, he, I had planned for him to have a remote day all day. So now what's gonna happen is he's gonna be calling and texting me all day, talking about, mama, I'm bored. What we gonna do? I'm hungry, what can I eat? But you know what? I, I told my neighbor, I called my neighbor and I said, leave a shovel and a bag of salt by the door. <laughs> Because right before I walked out here, I texted him and I said, you go out there and make some money. That's what I said. <laughs> these kids, I do not understand these kids today. These kids today don't know how to hustle the way we used to have to. I don't know if y'all remember, because I grew up in Chicago, and my mother would say, you go, I would say, mama, what, what I'm gonna do today? It's a snow day. She said, put on your clothes and go ask the neighbors if they need somebody to shovel the snow. So I had to shovel all of my neighbor's snow and I would get so mad because I'm thinking any other time my mother never wanted me going up to other people's doors because she was like, <laughs> my mother would be like, stranger danger, they gonna take you. <laughs> now she wants me to shovel their snow. So I'm slipping and sliding in the snow, trying to shovel the snow. And, we, and, and, and back in Chicago when it snowed, we had to get bundled up. I had snow boots on or not even snow boots, they were called shoe boots because you had your shoe, you put them in your, in your boots. I had the snow pants on. I had the Eskimo coat with the fur on my, bundled up, all you could see is my eyes. The only thing you, that's it, that's it. And uh, I would go and shovel, remember when your hands would be cold, they're freezing? 
Because it's hard shoveling snow with mittens. You had those gloves. And then these days, it's a, it, you know, that's what I used to do young. These kids today, they don't know how to do that. But, like, it just seems like it's a different kind of snow. Because I don't remember my feet getting wet like they do now. Like, my feet are soaking wet. And I told John, it's the vegan leather. That vegan leather don't work. <laughs> I tried. I tried. I need a doggone cow on my foot. I tried. <laughs> I know, I know y'all gonna get mad at me, the vegans, but <laughs> look, it is what it is. The vegans not working for my feet. It don't keep me dry. But y'all, we gonna have a good time today. I'm gonna give y'all some fun. I will give you some fun. What's that thing? Rain, sleet, or snow? Is that what it is? Yeah, and, and the show will go on. And the show will go on. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> y'all, tomorrow is February 14th. It is Valentine's Day. Tomorrow. <laughs> I'm going to be waiting. Somebody better send me something tomorrow, John Murray. <laughs> Somebody better send me something. I'm waiting. But today, I'm not gonna even gonna focus on Valentine's Day because today is Galentine's Day. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> so this is a day for single women to celebrate their friendships with each other. It is also known as we don't need no man to make us feel loved and special. This is <laughs> Galentine's Day. <laughs> for the single ladies. So I really wanted to celebrate my single girlfriend, so I made some gift baskets that I am actually sending all of them. So hear me, my, so this is a gift basket, thank you, Michael Lee, that I created. So let's see what is in here. Oh, got my, we got, we got my Hershey's Kisses. We got the Hershey's Kisses in here. All of the Hershey's Kisses, because ladies, these are the only kisses you're gonna be getting this week. So I wanted to, I wanted to make sure, make sure y'all got it. So then, and then I got uh, all my girlfriends a bottle of wine, all right? And, it, and this is what I call it, uh, AKA Sherry Sexy Juice. That's what I call <laughs> the bottle of wine. And I get a bunch of stuff. Oh, can you bring out my uh, body pillow? Yes. So everybody is getting a body pillow from me because you need something. This body pillow is nice. All my girls, my single ladies, you're gonna need something to wrap your legs around and snuggle with. <laughs> Especially on this cold snow day. And then also in the gift uh, bag, I put in a DVD of Murder, She Wrote, because... <laughs> Who does not love Jessica Fletcher, all right? And then this is the most, the best thing that I got for my girlfriends. I got you a big pack of AA batteries. <laughs> got you the AA batteries. Okay, y'all for your flashlights and your remote controls. <laughs> Y'all get your minds out the gutter. Did the snow affect your mind? So I wanted to get the double Ds, but everybody was out of the double Ds. So. <laughs> So anyway, this is what, can you take this and y'all just start shipping them out today for them, all right? That's what, happy Galentine's Day. <laughs> Nobody say I don't take care of my girlfriends. Now, y'all, <laughs> Ryan Reynolds is jokingly calling out his wife, Blake Lively, for ditching him on Super Bowl Sunday. So Ryan posted, so Blake Lively came out with Taylor Swift and Ice Spice. They were in the box together. And Ryan posted, has anyone seen my wife? <laughs> That's what he posted. Now, instead of being home with Ryan, Blake was with her BFF, Taylor Swift, and Ice Spice cheering on the Kansas City Chiefs. How you get to be Taylor Swift's best friend? I don't know. What is the requirement? I'm trying to put in an application myself. I'm telling you. Cause she be, you, and, and you know, cause you know when you're your best friend, you're gonna get cut at some point. But I wanna know what, <laughs> and she, so she's the new best friend. But I gotta say, I did not blame Blake Lively uh, because if Taylor invited me to the Super Bowl, I would have left Ryan Reynolds at home as well. <laughs> You know, because here's the thing. You know, when I was, when, whenever I used to date somebody when I first got married, I would be like, no, my husband has to go with me everywhere. We are attached at the hip. You know, you know those married couples, they always wear the same shirts and be dressed up. That's how it was. I'm his, he mine. That's what I used to have. But now that does not happen anymore. If, I, if a man wants to stop me from hanging with Taylor Swift, I'm like, you'll be all right. You, you sit. <laughs> sit right here, I'll be off, I'll be back. So I say to Ryan Reynolds, let your lady go. Because after hanging with Ice Spice, who looked like she didn't know nothing about the doggone game, 
she is gonna be ready to come back to you, Ryan, anyway. After Blake Lively sees Taylor kissing Travis Kelsey and everybody getting booed up, she's gonna sit there and go, you know what, I could be home with my husband doing the same thing. So that's, so Ryan, be, it's, it's gonna be all right. But it's good it's because Blake was a wingman. She could be a good wingman for her friend Taylor. It's always good to have a good girlfriend with you like that because then you can leave early or you could give your wingman your girlfriend that looked like, go, 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 <laughs> go. And it's always when you had a wingman, that girlfriend, it's always when they don't want to go. You're like, go on, just go. And they never want to go. I, got a, I had a wingman and I was at a party once and it was a well-known actor. He was trying to talk to me, but my girlfriend, Earlene Gray, <laughs> Would not leave me alone, y'all. I kept giving her the eyes. I was like, would you please leave? Because at the time, this would be for Jesus. I was like, I want to sleep with him. <laughs> Just... Go ahead. That was BC before Christ. All right, so anyway. <laughs> He know my heart, I'm just telling y'all what happened. But she would not leave, she wouldn't leave. And I kept looking at her, my eyes got wider and wider. <laughs> she never got the hint. And he asked me, he said, would you like a drink? And she said, yeah, we would like a drink. <laughs> I'm looking at her like, would you get out of here? Then she starts quoting Bible scriptures on me. <laughs> oh my God, so nothing, we went home, me and her by ourselves, nothing. <laughs> Then the same, my same girlfriend, Earlene Gray, did it to me at another time. We were at the Essence Music Festival, and that's in New Orleans. New Orleans. That's when it's like the biggest group. You know, men coming from all over to see all of the entertainers and the musical acts. And another, I met another well-known actor, and he was flirting with me, y'all. Now, he's married now, but at the time, he was single. He was absolutely single, and he was flirting hard. But my girlfriend did not get the hint. And I'm telling you, he came off, he was a party we were all at and they had cars everywhere and he stood on the car his legs were like this and he was like this and I went here I come <laughs> when I tell you slid right in front of him at that party right because in New Orleans it's hot it's hot and it's sweaty and it's hot and what happens in New Orleans, I don't know the rest, but it just... <laughs> and he sat there and he said, where, where, where are you staying? I said, six minutes away, we could walk, literally. <laughs> when I tell you, I was red to D. And this when my girlfriend come over quoting them scriptures. Then she put her hand and whispered in my ear, Sherry, what would Jesus do? <laughs> That's what they always get you. And I said, well, Jesus is not going to do nothing but Sherry. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. That dad going to grow up to see wingman when wingman go wrong. And she going to look at me. She said, how you don't want to be with him? He done had his lips on every actress in Hollywood. I went, I don't care. <laughs> <sighs> so nothing. We ended up going back to our hotel by ourselves. Nothing happened. Thank you, Lord. Uh, <laughs> So I say, Ryan, you have nothing to worry about because Taylor was probably ready to send Blake home to you anyway. <laughs> and yes. And I want to say, Earlene Gray, I still ain't forgave you for both those incidents. <laughs> so y'all, Jermaine Dupree, he is doubling down on his fashion choice at the Super Bowl. If y'all don't remember, if you do not remember, he hit the stage with his little Lord Fauntleroy outfit on. And that's what, he, that's what he had on stage. So the outfit that Jermaine Dupri wore went viral because of his socks. Okay, I said, <laughs> look at the socks. I said that he looked like a little boy going to church, all right? Real Housewife of Atlanta's Portia Williams joke. She said, do the socks come in a 5T because they would look good on my daughter PJ. <laughs> and then I look, PJ got the same socks on that Jermaine Dupri got on. <laughs> so Jermaine Dupri posed, he said he was too partied out to see the memes of him, but he thought that they were all funny. He even posted a close-up of the socks to let us know that they was Louis Vuitton. Let me tell you something. 
I don't care if those socks were Louis Vuitton's, Louis Vuitton's cousin Charles. They are not cute. <laughs> those things are only cute on PJ. That's it. <laughs> I just feel like when people got it, when you know when people want to take, they got to take their clothes off and they got to show you the tag that it's the designer. That means it's not a good outfit. If they got to show you the designer, I don't know what it is. You see people and they got all, they got all of the clothes on with the designer labels, and it, it, just because it's a designer doesn't mean you should put it on. You can have. The, I see some people. They have outfits on. They'll be worth hundred thousand dollars or more, but they still look like they went to the swap meet and got the outfit. So I'm looking at Jermaine Dupri. I think somebody tricked Jermaine into buying this one. <laughs> I do. It's people like Jermaine Dupri that walked into the designer store. He done walked into the Louis Vuitton store. All the employees whispered to each other. They said, go to the back and pull out the stuff that we can't sell. <laughs> and then as I look at those socks that he showed me, like, you see them socks? You know men like to wear socks to bed, okay? I don't want you coming to bed with me with those socks on. Because I can see right now that pearl would scratch up my legs, right? <laughs> Pearl scratch ankles up, so mm-mm. And then the socks look like, like if you washed them one time, they'd unravel. They do look, them socks look like somebody's grandmother crocheted them together and put the pearl on. <laughs> then they put the little iron on Louis Vuitton. They iron on the little. But you know what, Jermaine, you did a great job and we love you. We do love you. <laughs> but don't wear those socks. Don't wear those socks, Jermaine. Send those socks to PJ. She like them. Y'all, we got a great show for you today. <laughs> because later on, the world famous Chippendales are here. And up next, we're chatting with Tony Award winning actress and host Jane Krakowski. <laughs> We'll be right back. My first guest has always been a performer who can truly do it all. She's a singer. She's a dancer. She's a Tony Award winning actress. And I had so much fun working with her as the egocentric Jenna Maroney on the hit show 30 Rock. Now, she is the host of the game show Name That Tune. Please welcome Jane Krakowski. Because it's been over 10 years. Uh, but, but, uh, I, but I can't. Because we worked <laughs> together on 30 Rock, and so many people that. <laughs> like, I loved working with you guys on 30 oh, Rock. I played Tracy Morgan's wife. Yes. And, um, and I love working with you. And like, people still come up to me and talk about the show. Do you get that all the time? I do. Well, I mean, shows don't go off the air anymore now that there's all the streaming, streaming. networks. So, uh, and a new generation is finding the show now, which is quite yes. fun. But I mean, you're pretty iconic from the show. <laughs> you went viral with your meme. Will you please grace us with how you say the word ham? Yeah, there was the meme of me going <laughs> ham, 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 it's ham. <laughs> Gold. Like literally, <laughs> you know, they have the like the cameos where we could do vid right. like personal videos, yeah. and people always want me to do Angie Jordan's lines from Thirty Rock. That's I all know. my requests are. So sweet. <laughs> so well, we had a great time filming we it. Had such a good time. And, and never will there be as funny lines really again. It was written just so like it was written Rock. so well. Yeah. Well, there, you know, I was so excited because when I watched the Super Bowl, I saw you in a in a commercial because you did a Super Bowl ad with Tina Fey. Oh. So that was, so, yeah, they were like, that was so good. Aw, thank you. 
Like when so you were fun. with when you were with Tina, like did you feel like it was old times? Absolutely, and Tina Fey is just the gift that keeps on giving uh -huh. uh, with her graces and and sharing this this spot with myself and Jack McBrayer, also from Thirty Rock, that was on yes. it. Yes, it was funny. I was when I first when I saw it finally, uh -huh. I was like, who am I doing? I'm not really doing Tina Fey. Like, what am I doing? Yeah. And then I realized I'm doing Tina Fey playing Liz Lemon, imitating my performance as Jenna Maroney. <laughs> okay, which is so many layers too complicated for a 30 second. Oh my gosh, there's no like there's no label for that at the Emmys. No. Like that was a good performance you yes, did. Yes, yes. Thank you very much. It, it was fun. It was a really fun ad and and, and a bucket list item to be in a Super Bowl commercial. Because you me. always wanted to do a Super Bowl. And I've Bowl never commercial. been on one yet, so this and is there, a real dream. And the whole world got to see it. I know. Yeah. I know. Very now exciting. you you also starred in these iconic shows. You were in Ally McBeal, as well as 30 Rock. <laughs> Look at this one right here. And I loved it. You were in Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Yeah. So, girl. <laughs> so, like, Jane, do you, and, 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 you know, those shows, like, it's just different generations of fans. Do you like having all those fans from different generations? Of course I do. And I think, um, I feel very lucky and grateful that I've been able to be on shows that were so unique yeah. and special and popped out. Uh, I mean, there's so much great, there's so many great shows on television over the years, and uh -huh. I'm of the generation that was reared on television. So um, I love being on it, and I feel very lucky that I've, you know, the mother watched Ally McBeal, yes. the child loves 30 Rock, 30 and then Rock. their daughter now watches Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, Absolutely. so I feel very lucky about that. And it's so funny because, like, you, you watching you, I know my son, because Jeffrey watches me, okay, he's not such a fan of my work, okay? <laughs> like, literally, Jeffrey's just like, it, it's yeah. okay, Mom, you're all right. Like, but I know your son, Bennett. Is he a fan of your work? Well... Mm -hmm. oh. Look at him, how cute as he want to be. He's incredibly supportive, and I adore yeah. him beyond life. Uh, obviously, and beyond life, he's amazing. But I don't know. I mean, I think he's he's grew, he grew up with us. Our kids grew up with us being in the business yep. and who we are. So they kind of it's kind of their everyday life. Absolutely. I mean, he was in the other room when the Super Bowl commercial came out. I was like, um, it's on now. Do you want to come <laughs> see it? Like, <laughs> so I get it. But you know, he's twelve and a half, and that seems right on target. And okay, normal. but it's even at twelve and a half. Like, do you let him watch the shows that you're on? Uh, he watched a little bit of 30 Rock when we made um, an at-home episode in the okay. pandemic because he was my at-home helper. Right. So um, I wanted him to have an idea of the timing of the show and the comedy, the sense of the comedy, um, which he was much younger then. So uh, it may have been a little young for him to watch, but he got the idea. And I have to say, yeah. he had to like put a fan on me at a, a very specific moment in the shooting, episode yeah. for the comedy to work in this joke. And boy, did he have that family comedy timing. I was like, he nailed it every single time. He did. And our sweet, I, I know you know how amazing our cast and crew was, but they yes. sent him like a crew shirt because he was our, my at-home crew and uh -huh. he, he proudly wears his 30 Rock crew shot, a shirt, you okay. know, now in life everywhere. So. Well, let me tell you what my son did. He had a, he had a day off of school. <laughs> I had him working the cameras. Half my head was missing <laughs> on the daggone show. I said, what cameraman let my son Aww. on my shot, girl? It was neck down, that face is just gone. Hilarious. So, he's going for the good bits. He's going for the good ones. <laughs> so Wait, I, didn't... I didn't mean that any other way. <laughs> yes, you did. To me, yes, you did. No, that came off so long. <laughs> girl, you better stop acting like you ain't freaky, Jane. I love it. <laughs> now I know. <laughs> Look, I get. Does Ben give you like unsolicited advice? On fashion, usually. Really? Yes, on what I'm wearing. And, well, and what I say, because I, I don't know anything. Well, obviously, that's cool to say, or <laughs> appropriate or not appropriate yeah, to say. Yeah, they don't think we know anything. Yeah, they think we know nothing, which is amazing. <laughs> uh, yeah, he mostly gives me fashion advice. Like, sometimes I'll dress up and I think, wow, I look good right now. He'll be like, oh, it. my God, do not go out in that, Mama. <laughs> so, it's all right. So Jeffrey, no fashion advice, but he'll go, stop wearing that wig. Like, take the wig off. <laughs> My son, I love him. Now, you, and I have to tell you, this is what is exciting to me. Congratulations, you are, you are being honored with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Girl! Jane, like that's a big deal! That's such a big deal! Are you excited? I'm excited. <laughs> so sweet. I am excited and I am, um, I'm still like flubbled about it. Like I kind of can't believe it. And I, I think when I finally heard, I was, I, I, I got really emotional because I yeah. was, it feels like it's a legacy that lasts. So, Absolutely. Um, I, I, I'll be proud for my son and my family to be able to go see it for Girl, years your to fans come. will go and clean up your star in LA. Do you know that? Yeah. Like they don't let it get dirty. 
Oh, I'm so sick. It's so, it did so amazing. I cannot wait. Do you know where it's gonna be? They haven't told me yet. They do, I mean, they will obviously let me know, but I haven't heard yet. Oh my gosh, girl, I, I can't wait to I go see I wonder who star. I'm between. It's so very exciting. And, and here's the thing. You are getting a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. You're on all these iconic shows, yet you cannot post pictures of anything because your behind doesn't have a social <laughs> media account. What, what kind of freakazoid are you that you have no <laughs> social media account? Yeah, I've just not gone there yet. What do you mean you ain't gotten there yet? <laughs> do you know how many followers you would have if you opened up a, a, like an Instagram account or a Facebook, anything? I feel like I'm, um, what is the word? I'm, I'm sort of like defiantly missing out in a way. Okay. Um, but maybe purposely, I think yeah. maybe it's a purposeful choice. Um, I don't know, I think it feels a little bit to me like, and this is uh, going back a little bit, but when you wanted to go to like the hottest club and there was the, the red rope, I feel right. like I'm afraid that my numbers won't be good enough, so I don't want to like go on there and then nobody follows me. I just sort of feel like that. That thing, would not be so. true, girl. I, you, if you get on one, I'll follow you and send you some Thank nasty you. pictures. <laughs> Of all, the good bits. of all the good bits. Of <laughs> all the good bits. All the good bits. But you know, but you do make a really good point because social media causes a lot of people anxiety. Yeah. It affects their mental health. Yeah. Do you feel a certain amount of peace of not being on and, and catering to people's opinions and having to post pictures? I guess I do. I think you have to know whether it's right for you or not right yeah. for you. And I, I love um, the enjoyment that other people get from it. I love that uh, watching my friends and, and all the great things that they're doing and them posting their triumphs and, yeah. and achievements. So that part of it I think is wonderful and fun, but I just don't know if it's if it's for me and for me to be able to sleep at night. <laughs> I, no, no, I got you, because everybody should take a break from it. You yeah, know? So I think you there's got, times. So it right? allows you to spend more time with Bennett and you know do the things that you want to do instead of feeling like a slave right. to social right. media. And also I'm trying to really um, temper that for him and his interests. So, Absolutely. Um, as I've learned, as my son is getting older and older, the, uh, you, you represent, I think, best as a parent by, by doing, not just saying. But you have to also know what he's, what, what they're like, know, what they know on social media. So you gotta, you gotta just know, cause you, you don't even know what an OnlyFans account is, do you? <laughs> Jay, yeah, we gotta, we, we just gotta get you like a shadow account. I don't know just, what yeah, it we is, gotta, Sherry, we, yeah, what is I, it? I'm gonna give you my password, <laughs> so. Cause you gotta know what's going on with these kids today. But I want to tell you, I, I, I just love you. I'm so in awe of you because you are a quadruple threat, girl. You act, you dance, you sing, and now you're a host of Name That Tune, Name that okay? Tune. You. Now, I've seen the show a few times. It looks like you're having a good time. I'm are you? I'm having a blast. You having a blast? I on love the show? the show. I mean, it was the game show that I watched as a child at home, and I came from a pretty musical family, so I loved. We obviously loved guessing along and trying yes. to. Um, win from our couch. And so when I heard it was coming back, I was thrilled to be asked to be a part of it. And I get to work with Randy Jackson. Randy Jackson. I mean, he's too. like the best. He was on the show and he talked about how good you were when oh. he came on the show. So like, and you got celebrities that come, so yeah. you like being, you get to see people you know. Well, you should come if you, uh, do, would you like to come be on Girl, the show? Girl, hell no, I'm not gonna get that dead on music. I'm so bad. I'm bad at guessing. <laughs> I might have to try it, Jane, but you have to stay because I still need you because you are so much fun. Y'all, Jane is sticking around and we are putting her game show skills mm. to the test, so don't miss it. <laughs> Vivica, you now get to hear all 10 notes. Okay. Listen and name that tune. Monday, Monday. <laughs> I try. Excuse me. Okay. That is correct. Oh my God! Monday, Monday, shoot. Y'all, that was Jane hosting her hit game show, Name That Tune. And y'all, so clearly, Jane knows a lot about music. But today, we're not going to test her knowledge on oh, music. No. We're gonna test your knowledge on a different subject. So it is time to play Name That Cartoon. All right. Okay, 
so Jane, here's how this game is okay. going to work. You and I are going to take turns reading famous catchphrases, and the, earth, the other person has to guess which cartoon character said it. But here's the twist. Our mouths are going to be stuffed with marshmallows <laughs> while we read the catchphrases. <laughs> so, Jane, you and I are going to take our seats. Okay. Have a seat, my lovely All lady. Right. All right. Now, I'm going to go first, since I co-starred on the hit show, 30 Rock, OK? <laughs> we're going to put 30 seconds on the clock, and we're going to put marshmallows in my mouth. Uh, uh, hello. Uh, uh, hello. I got my mouth filled with marshmallows. <laughs> so, Jane, are you ready? <laughs> Yes. You baby. All right. Please just go hit the music, the clock. All right. What's that? What? Yeah, that would be Bugs Bunny. Yep. Okay. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, Fat Albert? Uh huh. All right. That, 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 that's all, folks. Oh. That, that's all, Is, folks. That, that's Daffy Duck? No, no. All uh, right. Well, pass. That, 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 that's all, folks. All, folks. All right. Well, pass. Is that Bugs Bunny, too? No. Oh, all God. Right. Okay. Oh, it's over. So we got, we got three. <laughs> okay. Is it my uh, turn? Uh, so okay. Now, All you right. gotta put the marshmallows in your mouth. Okay. All right. All right. I got, uh, you, yeah. got yeah. you got, you got two correct. <laughs> so now it's your turn to put the marshmallows right. in your mouth and you got 30 seconds <laughs> on the clock. <laughs> All right. Get ready and go. Dabba dabba do! Flat friend song! She hoo-hoo! Gigi's! Oh, Gigi! I don't know that one! Pass! Velma! You're despicable! You despicable! You despicable! That that man that spits all the time! Yeah, the spit man! Despicable! The spit man! I don't remember his name! Oh. Who else? Scooby Ruby Doo! Oh, that's Scooby Doo! <laughs> I want to thank you for being <laughs> such a great sport with me. I love it. I love and it. we got you. I love you. I love you, girl. We got you this cartoon queen crown and trophy. Aww. That is your, and you are queen. Oh, that's the best. Jane Krakowski, that's your trophy. Aww. Thank you so much for being here. And y'all, watch Name That Tune. It is a funny show. It airs Tuesday nights at 8 on Fox. And we'll be right back. Jane Krakowski. We'll be right back. It's time for what I wanted for Valentine's Day versus what I got. So our first one comes from Kim, who wanted her man to give her a cute teddy bear with the three words every woman wants to hear. Here's the teddy bear Kim wants it. Oh, I love you. That's so sweet. All right, and here's the teddy bear that Kim got. Bitch, you fine? Well, I mean, I guess those three words work too, especially if you're looking for a really good Valentine's night. That's, that's the good one. Now, our next one comes from Christina, who wanted a bottle of bubbly and some chocolate-covered strawberries from her Valentine. So here's the gift that Christina, the gift box that Christina wanted. Yes, cute, all right? And here's the gift box Christina got. You see, this right here, this right here is what happens when your Valentine is cheap and uses a promo code. <laughs> All right, so our next one comes from Virginia who wanted a pretty pink dress to wear for her romantic night out. Here's the pink dress that Virginia wants it. Oh, I'm right. And here's the pink dress that Virginia got. <laughs> Oh, man, Virginia, that looks like a loofah for the shower. <laughs> but you know what, Virginia, I got an idea. Listen close, come here. I want you to pour some shower gel over that dress. 
I need you to rub it up against your man. Get a good lather going, and I guarantee y'all gonna have a good time. <laughs> Don't say I didn't try to help you. All right. So, our last one comes from Michael, who wanted his partner to set up a romantic candlelit dinner. Here's the romantic candlelit dinner that he wanted. Oh, it's cute, okay. And here's the candlelit dinner he got. Oh, okay. okay. Michael, something tells me that you did something to deserve this right here. I mean, damn, he didn't even give you a real candle. But I hope that you have a good Valentine's Day anyway. <laughs> so y'all, up next, the world famous Chippendales play a game that you will only see on this show. Don't miss it. Sherry will be right back. Day, and there's no better way to celebrate with than with hot men. So please, y'all, welcome the world famous Chippendale. <laughs> oh my God! Oh my God! So, ladies, we have Shylon. We have Shylon. We have Alejandro. We have, we have Emerald, and we have Chris. All right. So, Shylon, the Chippendales are celebrating, you're celebrating your 45th anniversary. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us about your tour? Yeah, so like you said, it's our 45th anniversary. We're super excited about that. But this is going to be our first tour back since the pandemic. So we're oh. super stoked. We start our North American tour next month. And of course, you can always visit us in our hometown, Las Vegas, at the, at the Rio Resort and Casino, which yes. we are excited to have you back. Hopefully, let's Yes, I went to see you at the Rio. I had a good time. I'm going to tell y'all. <laughs> Y'all made my night. <laughs> so, you know what? It's Galentine's Day. And you know, fun fact, when I was a struggling stand-up comic, I would open for like some of <laughs> Chippendale's dancers. To make, the ladies didn't like me at all. They was like, move the funny, get on to the mix. <laughs> so we're gonna have, it's Galentine's Day. I wanna have some fun. And I have invited you guys, five single ladies, to join us in a game of musical chipping chairs. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna go over here. We're gonna meet the lucky ladies. Here we go. All right, gentlemen, I want y'all to meet Melanie, Melanie, Linnea, Olivia. We got Olivia, we got Kimberly, and we have Patrice. Okay. All right, so ladies, are, are y'all excited? Yeah! <laughs> okay, what enthusiasm. I love it. All right, so ladies, this game is just like musical chairs, but it's better because the Chippendales are the chairs, okay? <laughs> so when the music stops, you're gonna find a chair and you're gonna sit on a Chippendale. <laughs> now, the last person without a Chippendale is out. So each round, we're gonna remove a chair and a Chippendale. So I don't even know why I was not invited to play this game, <laughs> but... Chippendales, take your seats. All right, take your seats, Chippendales. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. I like the way this chair feels. Oh my God. Okay, so ladies, are you ready? Yes. Okay, start the music. All right now. All right now. Okay, you're moving. You're moving. Come on, ladies. All right, go. Oh! Before, do you? not play, <laughs> do not play with Kimberly. Olivia, you got knocked right off the lap, okay? <laughs> so, uh, Chippendale, you are out. Chris, can you escort Olivia out? All right. Oh, we gotta lose Chris. And I want to... <laughs> and I have to give a shout out to our very own Chippendale Jimmy. I love the bow tie. <laughs> All right, so it's four ladies left. Y'all ready, ladies? Yeah. Start the music. Okay, all right. Oh, Emerald. Oh, oh my gosh. Look at this way, Emerald. Look, oh, oh my goodness. I love it. I love oh. it. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha. 
<laughs> That's terrible. I don't know. So, uh, okay, you, girl, you will be throwing people off that Lanaya. Okay, so at Chippendale, you're out. Emerald, you got us. Who is he escorting now? Who got? Who got? The ch Lanaya, you okay. gotta get. Oh, look at this. Oh my god. Oh my god. Girl, you live in my fantasy. Sorry. So we're down to three. Start the music. All right. Okay, so the final two are out. You ain't even got nobody to score. You just got to walk up by yourself. All right, Kimberly. Right, what you still standing here for? You got to walk <laughs> Okay, who, who is scores? Did somebody score? Okay, the final two, play the music. Okay, play the music. Is there only two left? Is there only two left with Chris? All right, all right. Come on now. All right. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Was it me? to see the Chippendales perform at the oh Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Atlantic City. You're going to enjoy their world-class casino, dinner for two at one of their award-winning restaurants and Ocean View accommodations. All right, everybody, y'all came back to join me. Jimmy, come on back. And y'all, I just got to say, it's Galentine's Day, so I'm sending all five players to Atlantic City Right back. Come and be a part of my studio audience. Go to SherryShowTV.com for tickets. We'll be right back. <laughs> Sherry will be right back. Tomorrow from Abbott Elementary, Janelle James. So join us then for the best time in daytime. Bye. Yeah.